this box previously belonged to someone else and they started to do a build and I lined the walls with this 3mm ply which has got like a vinyl finish on it now the, the truck box it's got a roll cage but it's probably the 18mm ply with GRP um, and it's insulated with some Celotex now I, I want to put a 9mm ply over here and I want to expose the timbers to see what kind of structure I've got below this because I want to get a screw to the wall I want to screw the bathroom walls up screw cupboards along here and along that wall and I want to know I'm screwing something that's going to hold also I want to make the box a little bit stiffer because I do know a friend who's got a, a Luton body he put almost, I think it was two, three by twos insulated, plied it and even he had some twists in his body which broke all his windows so I do want to make my body a little bit stiffer and this female ply also I want to add some insulation because you can't see here but we have steel steel and steel up here as well and if you don't insulate that steel you're going to get cold bridges and you're possibly going to get condensation on the walls where the steel is and maybe even mould so you really want to get away from that steel, insulate it or get a nice decent sized bit of wood between the steel and the, the inside environment so you don't get mould. So all this is coming off. I might add more wooden structures where I'm going to be putting cabinets and then a 9mm ply and the final finish is going to be like a white gloss plastic. Um, won't be GRP, it'll be coming word, cut an acrylic or something like that. I came Look at this. This is wet. It was not wet, it has been wet. Look at that, all, this, that black, all that black marking where it's been wet. Now, these windows weren't bonded in. They were just, you've got the inside fly screen part. You can, you screw the two together. And there is a gasket around the outside of the window to make a seal. Now the reason I know this wasn't bonded in is because I unscrewed this fly screen part of it took it away and the window fell out and smashed you can't see it there's some cracks here it's disappointing um, so I wasn't wanted in and you really should be and that that here just demonstrates why you should bond your windows in with a decent adhesive and sealant I've ripped out most of that board now there's a few bits I can't get to here here so I'm going to use a multi-tool now this is a great tool to have. I don't use it a great deal, but it makes some difficult jobs really easy. The blade on it I've got right now is for cutting insulation. Now if you've got thick insulation like this, scoring it with a Stanley knife or even using the, you can use a typical wood saw, it's not that great. This is brilliant. You just slice it in half. Just like that, and you get a nice neat cut. But right now, you stick a toothed blade in and we're going to cut this wood out nice and easy. So that made a what could have been a little bit of a tricky job, nice and quick. This is a it is a multi um, metal multi material blade. I can cut metal with it, but you obviously shorten the life of the blade by doing that. So I try to avoid it if I don't need to. So that was done. Now let's start on this walk.
After a few hours of practice, I've TIG welded the first part of the roof rack. Um, now I was just intending to spot weld it, kind of make it, assemble it, and then weld it all later. But I got carried away and ended up doing the full weld. And it's actually, it's turned out quite well. I'm gonna grind that back now. Obviously you use a flat wheel. See what sort of penetration there is. But I'm quite pleased. Some progress with the TIG welding. Lots more to be done. So I'm just removing some of the weld to a nice smooth surface. I'm not going to do that in all of the roof racks because the weld had strength. But being new to the TIG weld, I'm interested to see how good the weld is, how it cleans up. And it's, this, these are this is the front bars of the roof rack, so having that clean just looks a bit, a bit nicer, I think. So I've cleaned this up. And the weld is now invisible, you can't see it. Um, I guess it's good, got good penetration. Um, I might do some stress testing, but I'm quite pleased with that for about four hours practice on the TIG welder. I've never TIG welded before, and apparently aluminum is hard. So I'm quite pleased with that, but maybe I should show you some of my practice, um, practice welds before boasting too much about this. Now my practice welds do look a right mess um, and the real reason is I kept repeating practicing on the same piece of material it gets hot um, I've dunked the electrode a few times in the, in the molten pool of aluminium which is why it's a bit black and but lots of lessons learned um, TIG weld is it's tricky but it's certainly something you can teach yourself a bit of YouTube so I did a strength test on this, um, I just so put the bar, put it through here, just put it through here and put a bit, a bit of leverage on it, and I'm pleased it did, because it broke, and you can see that there's no real penetration, it was, the weld was probably maybe a mil thick, maybe less, just on the surface. So a good lesson learnt there. I think maybe more amps. A bit more, bit, move a bit slower. And really get that heat into that weld. So let's go again. Doing a stress test on this, um, but I don't want to put too much pressure on it because it's aluminium and I'll, I'll bend it. Mm. More welding practice needed. So with having broken the weld on the roof rack, I'm gonna I've made a couple of little bits to weld together. I should have done this before. Now weld these up, then give them a really good test. Um, done a better, a better um, chamfer. It's not what you call it. Call it a bevel. Done a better, better, probably a deeper bevel. Gonna probably turn the temperature up a little bit on the welder. Um, weld this up and then give it a really good stress test and see what happens.
more penetration required. So the a crack started to propagate in the top, but the what's actually fouled is the material to the side of the weld. The weld is intact. Um, so that's the kind of result we want. So now I should continue welding the same way as I did this one. So we'll start welding the roof rack up using the same settings for this. So the upper and lower rails for the roof rack are welded up and ready for the back piece to go in. Now I'm not going to do a curved joint here because I want to do a, a notch and have a straight edge. So I feel that kind of continues, leads onto the truck a bit better, to the habitation box rather than kind of ending with a, a radius. Um, so there's about 50 notches to do in all on this roof rack. Maybe 40, 50, but um, because of that, I've ordered a tube notcher. You can do it manually, but I think there's so many notches, and it's just a nice tool to have in your workshop. So I've ordered that. So for now, I'm going to move back on to going to move back on to doing the lockers. And I stopped doing those because my welding needed to improve. With that now, kind of certainly much better. I can move on to the lockers i'm just cutting the internal gutter in so they're nice and waterproof and we'll start welding that on today So this is the front face of one of the rear lockers and I've welded in this channel in here, internal, oh, internal gutter in. Now there is a simpler way to do this, I could have stuck this on the outside and have the, the door cover the gutter. Uh, that's quite a common way for the commercial truck builders to do it. This is going to be visually nicer, um, that was kind of flange all the way around the door is inside rather than the door being covering the entire box. Does that make any sense? I'm quite pleased the way my welding's progressed. There's lots lots of welding on here and it's taken me hours but there are some nice welds. I'm quite pleased with it. Some of them need a bit tidy up but this will be painted when it's finished so I can hit this with a flat boil and have a little tidy up and paint it. But I'm quite pleased with them. Um, welding has certainly progressed well. Um, so now this guttering is on, I'm going to build the rest of the box. I'll cut, the, up, cut the, up, the, up, the top, sides and the bottom. So I can now weld this box, finish this box. And the door is going to get the edges folded because the edges, flat piece of aluminium, the sides are folded because they will go into here and engage with a neoprene seal. And it's probably going to be hinged on this long face here so the door will come open that way okay so that's it for now um, thanks for watching again guys um, progress is quite slow at the moment because of my am learning to weld uh, materials for the kitchen have now all arrived i've now got more materials and than i need and i've got too many jobs to do so but i've put, I've put the roof rack to one side because of the i want to get the notching tool before I do any more on that. Plenty of welding to do, but I can start the kitchen, so maybe I'll start that this week. We'll see. Thanks for watching, subscribe guys. Lots more travel, fun and building and stuff coming up. Um, I'll get bored of building soon and I want to go traveling. So travel videos coming. I'm still editing Turkey. Um, Turkey was great. I didn't shoot enough video to be honest. It's been a pain, I 
in the backside to edit, but I am doing it, it is coming. Um, keep an eye out for that.